Welcome to the OBS tunnel. Today we'll write something 3D uh, with libtx that doesn't use the uh, CD scene. 3D scene? Hmm. So let's uh, get ourselves set up here really fast. Okay, now we got the boilerplate code down. So now let's try to actually render something. Uh, so when we want to render something, some model that isn't part of the uh, scene 3D, we can create a mesh. So let's make a new mesh. So we go true because we're not gonna change the vertices and we want, what do we want? How many? Mm, let's go for triangle, that's three vertices. Let's go for three indices as well, so we can create one triangle and go for a vertex attribute position. Hmm. Now let's actually specify that ourselves, where we specify a vertex attribute ourselves. We go for usage position and then three data points uh, per one of these attributes. So. We have three vertex data points for the position. And what are we going to refer to it as? We're going to refer to it as a underscore position. And now we got, we are set up so we can create a mesh. We want to specify the indices here. That's just going to be one, no, zero, uh, one, two, like that. And then the vertice data is going to be floats. So let's. Oh, there's a small error there. So we're going to go zero, zero, zero. So these are the three uh, f data points that we're going to specify for the position up here. That's the three that we uh, put up here is going to, to do. So now we know that the first three here is one vertex attribute of position. That's a bit, I don't know. You still gotta work with that <clears throat> even though that we are not going to work with the 3D scene. So this is going to be a triangle that just faces upwards. Now to get these data points into the mesh, we go uh, set vertices, and we just gotta uh, take into account that there's enough space for these vertices. The vertex attributes is taken into account. So this three up here means three sets of data. Great. Now I want to make a camera so that we can have an easy time with uh, the matrices. So let's make a camera, call it cam. Maybe we're going to move this mesh as well. There we go. So now we should get a decent matrix from this uh, by calling camera combined. Then we get a matrix that has the combined view and uh, what is it? Uh, projection and view matrix uh, combined. Great, now what do we need? We need a shader in order to render all of this because OpenGLES is a, pr a programmable pipeline only, so we have to specify a shader. Uh, luckily, this is easy using the shader program class. 
we don't have to deal with any calls directly into OpenDLDS. The shader that I'm writing here is uh, not going to be a regular OpenGL um, shader because it is it needs to be compiled into uh, GLSL ES, which is the stripped down version, so that we can run it <coughs> on more devices. So it is going to look a little bit different. And what we are used to. We're just going to make everything that passes through this uh, shader completely white. And the only thing this shader does is take the position and uh, multiply it by the uh, camera matrix so that we get the correct position in 3D space. Very straightforward. So now we just need some rendering code. This is the only place we're going to call a little bit into uh, OpenGL directly, but it's still through the uh, cross-platform bindings here, GL20, which is the uh, OpenGL ES 2.0. And if we're running on a computer, it's just going to be translated into some equal OpenGL, regular OpenGL calls. Still, this is also cross-platform, it's just uh, static access. Uh, now we're ready to start our shader, calling shader begin. And then we're gonna upload a uniform, so that's just set uniform, then we find the one for the matrix. And there's a really easy method where you can just specify the name, of the uniform, we go into our shader here and we say, okay, that's our uniform. That's where we want our camera projection to be, uh, the, the projection matrix, and then we just specify the matrix that's found in the camera. There we go, and now the camera's uploaded to the shader. Easy as that. Then the mesh, we can render the mesh using the shader program like this. And then the primitive data type should be GL triangles. Shader end. Great, now I'm unsure if I should call mesh maybe bind. Not sure, or if that's done for me. So let's take a look. Does it render at all? Does it work? It works. Okay, so I don't have to bind my mesh. That's cool. Cool, man. Uh, that was easy. Let's uh, let's do some more stuff. All right, we are back. I found this mesh builder. Really easy to work with. It's, uh, almost like a single call. I feel like this is only a single line of code. Um, but it's super easy. It's new mesh builder. Uh, begin and then end spits out a mesh and it's a clean mesh that you get it's not a model or a model instance or some weird structure this is just a mesh there is nothing about textures this is just vertex data super easy to work with so now I can just delete all of this and I got a nice capsule Instead, really, really impressed with how easy that was to work with. So now I have a capsule at uh, zero, zero, zero. Awesome. Okay, so I found this uh, the first person camera controller, which I don't know, it should, it should make it super easy for me to have some 
But it doesn't work, unfortunately. Hmm, you know, it's just because I didn't specify the type up here correctly. That's a bit of a bummer. But, now we should get an update method. Great! Graphics, delta time. Graphics, graph graphics, graphics. Get delta time, there we go. This should be much better. Great, so now we can really, really see the capsule. But we can't really see it because unfortunately, oh there it is. Unfortunately also, uh, there's no lightning. No, there's no lighting, sorry, not lightning, lighting. We need lighting, so let's add lighting. Finally got the lighting to work. I was missing this GL enable uh, for the depth test, so everything was see-through for a long while. Um, this dot value here is uh, the dot product between the face normal and the light direction, so that will be one if, they, if the light direction and the face is perpendicular. So the more uh, perpendicular they are, the more uh, light will uh, reflect off of the surface. Uh, if they're not perpendicular, if they're parallel, it, it will be uh, zero. So let's try to get the reflected lighting in the green, no, in the red channel, and then we turn the green channel on and the blue channel off uh, for the capsule, yeah. So what we see is the green, where we see all the greens, where there's no uh, light reflecting off and the yellow here is the green and red uh, so the, the yellow parts receive light. If we give it the dot value for all the channels we will get a black and white picture and we'll see why we need ambient light because this side of the model is not receiving any light at all and that's a bit of a problem. We should have some minimal light that faces that aren't facing the sun should receive. These lightens here, I think they're just libgdx's uh, mesh builder being weird. Um, if we go for the box instead of the capsule we can see that the lines disappear. So I think it's just a, a mesh builder problem. We also see that these faces are completely black and that's a bit of an issue. I got uh, some ambient light to work now by just increasing the minimum amount of light that uh, I allow here for in the dot value. This gives me, I also changed the light direction a little bit, so now uh, the light vector points uh, not equally in all directions, so I get uh, different, different colors for each side of the cube, uh, at least this way, because this is facing the light. When I go to the other side, uh, we start to reach that minimum, uh, which means that it's 0.03 light intensity. But uh, all these sides that are facing away from the light source, they all get the same light intensity. So that's, uh, I'm not happy with the look. Okay, now we got it. So it looks like this when you go on the other side of the cube. Haha! -ha! See, these faces are also lit in a different way. How did we accomplish this though? How did we? Well, in the shader, this it is a bit stupid. It's a stupid solution, but it's, uh, it works for now. Uh, we take the light direction and then uh, we calculate the dot value like we did before, but then we uh, calculate another dot value for uh, the same light direction, but in the, uh, you know, in the opposite direction. The same vector but the opposite in a way. I just multiplied it by minus one. And then when we want to find out how much a face is lit, we uh, f take the sum of these two values and then the, the backlight, the reverse light, is only half as intense as the front light. So we get this effect. I don't know if I'm happy about it, but it works, I guess, for now. Made some slight changes here, added a geo clear color for a nice lime green background. 
I also added these entities, which is just a mesh in a position. So now we can have more meshes, render more meshes um, at different positions. So to do that, I updated the uh, vertex shader here. I now also supply a model matrix, which will uh, translate and rotate and scale the uh, the mesh. Uh, so uh, right now it's just a translation. Um, it is really important that you do this in the correct order, uh, multiplied together that is, because for matrices, uh, the order in which you take the product is not, uh, it doesn't matter which order you do it in. Um, so to render each of these, we uh, have a translation matrix here, a uh, temporary one, it's just loaded as a identity matrix and then uh, we set it to be a translation matrix and then we upload it to the shader and then we render uh, the mesh from the entity using that shader and so we can get these uh, scenes with meshes that are in different locations uh, these are just random locations uh, but that is uh, translations taken care of uh, right there and we now get a a, a bit better 3d scene uh, still nothing uh, major going on here uh, but this is the the basics and I think I'll end the video here thank you for watching